Ladies and gentlemen, this is your reaction. This is anti-drug games. John Tron by the channel John Tron Show. Jax slips into the dark underworld of drugs. John tries to bring him out. Anti-drug games. I guess in the 70s or 80s, whatever in USA, there was a massive, you know, crack uh, type of uh, pandemic. I guess uh, during that time, there was lots of, you know, Mr. T and all the other people basically doing the ads. All the celebrity was, I guess, pitching in. But I didn't know they created games about that. I guess he's talking about video games. It would make sense. This John Tron show. This is a. This started as a video game review type of channel. So yeah, it's gonna be fun. I love this channel because you know every you know everything he covers is fucking hilarious and obviously the way he creates this is even better. So every one of them is a fucking iconic and I love how you know certain things become so iconic that they have become memes, right? You know almost every video I see certain that that has already became a meme. So I don't know. There's something like that might be in this one since this video has 20 million views. So yeah. Remember, well, if you like my reaction, do for like, subscribe. So I know which type of channels to react to more, which type of you know videos to react to more. Comment down if you want to react to a certain video, I guess. And check out the link in the description with all my videos. Check out the cast for all the different playlists. Check out the cards in. Yeah, that's what it. Jack, you think is something like is something off there? We missing something? Nah, you're right. It's probably okay. Jack, what is this? Where'd you learn to do this? Have you been doing seed? Back off, old timer. This is cool stuff. Jacques, come on, man. You're smarter than this. Winners don't do drugs. Remember, just like all the arcades in the '80s told us. When I'm high, I feel like a winner. We gotta get you straight, Jack. Scared straight. You see this, Carl? I'ma treat you like a bitch. You gonna call my Chester whenever I tell you. Okay, maybe not that straight. The date is October 14th, 1982. Drugs are rampant in the streets of the United States. President Ronald Reagan declares them a threat to national security. The following decades will be shaped by these actions forever. It is ridiculous how lots of, uh, you know, laws and not laws, but, you know, norms normally. Uh, all the different thing that is just common today can be traced back to Ronald Reagan. I mean, you know, I recently, not recently, you know, recent years, I realized like how much impact Reagan had in the USA right now with all the legislations and things. So drugs is one of them, obviously. Uh, around that time, obviously, cracks and, you know, uh, drugs were really rampant. And th there's no wonder that's why around that time, colors were really strong. Everybody was wearing bright colors, right? Because if you're in PCP or something, everything colorful would look awesome. <sighs> I mean, you know, I don't understand the concept like only, you know, it's really cool, man. You know, dr doing drugs is only cool kids do. First of all, drugs are supposed to, you know, override your senses that you feel good. And then it creates a dependency that you can't let it go. How is that cool in any sense? You're so weak that you need some substance to make you feel good. I mean. As the war on drugs continues to this very day, the message was clear. Remember, winners don't do drugs. That's not true. Remember when you'd play in our Winners exclusively do drugs. I mean, <laughs> if you talk about sports, I mean, that drugs is pretty fucking common. If not just to feel good, it also helps that, you know, I guess, performance. First of all, doping is pretty common. That's a form of drug. And they also do marijuanas and shit like that because, you know, it, it helps with the pain and shit. A game back in the 80s or 90s, it would show you that screen before you played the game. Not to Not mention, to mention the opioids. numerous dare campaigns that would tour school to school. I mean, truth be told, we didn't even give it much thought as kids. I mean, it was just so ingrained in our collective unconscious. I mean, drugs were such a problem in the 70s and 80s. By the time we were growing up, this was just accepted and expected. Anyone living How old is he again? 1780s when we were growing. How old is he? 
then I'll be able to recall for you the wealth of PSAs on the topic that ranged from realistic to ludicrous. Who taught you how to do this stuff? You, all right? I learned it by watching you. <laughs> that, that never gets old. But that's not even scratching the surface. Have a look at this. Now, what's wrong with you? Tonsillitis? Appendicitis? Yeah! <laughs> hey, you know what? I, I think you got a point there. It would be bad if my surgeon was smoking pot while operating on me. Here's a list of other things I wouldn't want him doing. Anything else but my fucking surgery! Now, let's see if I can still make a straight line. <laughs> You're really a piece of shit, aren't you? And then, of course, there's the Okay, I don't want to be that guy, but still, you know... <clears throat> Pot, basically, if, if done in the right amounts, could actually, you know, helps with your anxiety and actually calms you down at certain level. Done in the right amounts. So, I don't know. Surgeons might be doing that before doing surgery. But in a small amount, I'm not saying morbid, you know, a lot. Because if you do a lot, that is an opposite effect. Now you're just out of it. But if you do just right, it can actually calm you down, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> like let me make, seriously how much how many surgeons doing pot is an issue that their ad was necessary the one that lives in infamy this is your brain on drugs <laughs> yeah fuck you any questions <laughs> yeah I, I think i got a few so you're telling me that my brain on drugs is a healthy nutritious breakfast that helps my brain grow well, should i should do some drugs how could the point not have been driven home? Even our celebrity idols were telling us that drugs were the spawn of Satan. It even got to the point when Hannah See, this is what I'm saying. Look at that. Should I should do some drugs? How could the... Michael Jordan, but they had to put the McDonald's logo there. Why? Because McDonald's is, uh, you know, basically pushing this. So, they, you, are, you can already see that they want good PR. They couldn't give a fuck about drugs. They're only jumping on this bandwagon for a good PR. Otherwise, why put McDonald's logo there in the first place? The point of Satan. It even got to the point when Hanna Barbera and Pee Wee Herman were telling us to stay away. This is crack. You know, I'm just not sure how to deal with the emotions that come up after Pee Wee Herman tells me about crack rock cocaine. This guy. Just, just ushered a serious <laughs> warning to me with that look in his eyes. I, I, this is a state of national emergency. You see, Jacques? You're gonna find out one way or another. You gotta get off this stuff. I mean, Pee Wee Herman himself was so upset, he went into a dirty porno theater, jacked his wiener right off. Can you blame the man who's feeling emotional? He had to go make his dick cry. I'm still not convinced. I guess is that Pee Wee Herman thing realizes that, you know, every time the clowns basically, now Pee Wee Herman, why is that things like that appeals to kids? But when you grow up, that is one of the creepiest shit of all time. Pee Wee Herman feels creepy. Especially when he tells something like that, you just intuitively just think things like, hmm, he, he probably has some people tied up in his basement. Same thing with the basically, you know, every clown and shit. That's why the clown horror movies are so famous, apparently. Oh, dude, send your mom and daddy out of the room. Oh, I live by myself, thanks. I don't, got, I don't have parents anymore. You know who I am. Snake, dealing in weed, coke, crack, your choice. One of each, please. Take one hit and you'll do anything to cop more. Steal from your mama. Hey man, you get bit by like a mosquito or something? You don't look so good. Do I look like the kind of guy that would do that to a kid like you? You look like a snake! Yes! What? What the fuck? I'm basically half reptile, so he just reminds me Wait a minute, isn't, isn't that the meme? I think I heard that in many of the internet stream video too. Obviously pitch is better changed, I guess. But yeah, that is the meme. What, what the fuck? That's the meme. It's from John Tron. Come on. You. You look like a snake. Yes. What? What the fuck? I'm basically half <laughs> reptile, so he just reminds me of one of my brethren. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. You, you won't make this easy for us. That's fine. We'll take this to the only place you understand. To the world of video gaming. In the 80s, arcades were the cool hangouts for kids. They had Galaga, Donkey Kong, and of course, hard drug dealers. Now what can I say, it was a sign of the times. Pac-Man popping pills, Mario's eating mushrooms, and Simon Belmont? Terrible off-screen addiction to heroin. And look at him in part four. Could barely hold his whip. It's sad, really. That made arcades a prime target for the anti-drug campaign, which led to the creation of games like NARC. In this game, you're assuming the role of a narcotics officer named Max Force. Oh, and if you get a second player in there, they can play as Hitman. <laughs> Lord have mercy. 
I guess uh, nobody told me cops started doing wrestler names. I mean, not that I'm even upset. I just would have liked to know. Oh, this is great. Now we can finally teach kids good moral standards. You're busted. This would have put a tear in old Ronnie Reagan's eye. Well, yeah, all right, would, maybe actually, those guys would. were just resisting arrest, you know? I mean, they had to be dealt with. After all, we're just going in there with enough firepower to protect ourselves. Not even once. That was amazing. Well, to be honest, I guess they were just trying to portray with utmost realism how we handle drug offenders in this country. <laughs> Oh, look at that. I mean, look, this just makes me think one thing. Do you remember the time, obviously, GTA 5? Was it GTA 5 or GTA 4? Some, you know, it's, it's, it's every time a new GTA is out. Everybody from Fox News to God knows what starts on this bandwagon that, you know, GTA is the reason why crime is high. It's the games. People actually came after video games after GTA. That, you know, GTA and things, the games like that is the reason crime is high, this and that. But they had no problem with the game like this, right? They had no problem. If anything, government actually encouraged this game because it's an anti-drug game. So, a game that has more nuance to it, more concept to it, a story, a background and everything. Like, okay, what we are playing is, is, an, is a criminal. He's an asshole. He's a criminal. He kills people. That's a nuance. It's like a, a, a movie that you can control. That's what that game is, GTA and things like that. That's what they have issues with, like a nuanced, proper story where you can see what is right and what is wrong in that sense, right? Otherwise, all movies and books are wrong, right? If you can't even make your mind on something like that. So that's an issue. But games that have no, no nothing detail, no nuance to it, just yeah, as soon as you start the game, all you have to do is just, you know, start shooting your gun and kill people like this. Apparently, drug dealers and I guess people who buy drugs or whatever that is. So they had no issue with this. If anything, people see this in USA. People see this and think, fuck it, I'm going to do that in real life. Would we'll take out AR-15 and start to shoot anybody who has drugs or anything like that. Right? Because this has no nuance to it. Just shoot the people who, has, who deals in drugs, I guess. So this is just really fucked up. In something nuanced like Grand Theft Auto, where you are a criminal doing criminal things. I mean, that kind of understandable, but that they have issue with. Cocaine is really popular with um, the same guy. I give up. Too little, too late, talking leg. I'll be able to put an end to this drug ring once I fi figure out how to drive a stick. How's the, uh, what's the, how's the clutch work again? Finally, you get to the game's antagonist, Mr. Big, who's apparently a, a real good Tokyo drifter over here. He's got a <laughs> picture of himself labeled me. Now, there's so many things wrong with this, I don't even know where to begin. Why is in wheelchair? What the fuck was that? What is that end thing? Seriously. Mm -hmm. He crawls away? I guess Lou Bega had some hard time getting work after Mambo number 5. What the fuck is that? Now, I've never seen a game go from a perfect oh. 0 to a perfect 10 this quickly. Is this real life? Jacques, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this for you. You gotta get with it. Gotta get clean. And to show you the light of the sober individual, we're gonna have to take the most extreme measure possible. Playing Wally Bear in the No Game. Under no circumstances would I do this otherwise. Because it's basically akin to torture. This is madness. Why is that bear not wearing a helmet on his skateboard? That's besides the point, Jacques! This is officially your intervention. Welcome to Wally Bear- Okay, first of all, that past game. That skull thing. I remember that, you know, playing games like that around, you know, when I was really small, playing 8-bit games like that. That's a pretty common thing with most games, isn't it? If you go against main boss, you kill him and basically the, there is also another level of boss, which is him in the skeleton fighting you. I mean, that is so common with lots of games. I don't know, I just remember that. I love how reacting to John Tron, I'm remembering things from my childhood. Same should happen yesterday with the Disney thing, right? All the Disney bootleg games, even in this one and the no gang as you can see the cartridge is kind of weird because it's not officially licensed by nintendo also on part of the label there's a circle that says press here and when you push it it plays a jeff van vonderen sound bite we're gonna get you on a plane go to florida <laughs> i'm just playing with you it doesn't do jack shit why is it here 
Who was even out there manufacturing their own NES cartridges anyway? Oh, what is that? Chinese glue mothballs? How many kids were in this before, huh? Probably got a disease now. This game was made in 1992 exclusively for a North American audience by American Video Entertainment. They're also known for such other classics as Blackjack, Puzzle, and of course, how can we forget dudes with attitude? So in short, that's how you know it's gonna be good. Wally Bear and the No Gang. Now I can already see him saying no to society's norms. Now as you can see, he does not wear his hat straight. No, it's perfect because if the drug norms. dealer walks up to that side of his body, he doesn't have to say no to him, his clothes do it for him. Ah, what was the color palette on this one? Public restroom? Greens and browns, Jesus Christ. Uncle Gary Grizzly has been planning a party for you and the No Gang. Uh, hey, Dad, uh, I know you like to live your life on the free and easy, but do you think you could do, uh, do away with the whole no pants thing till after I leave? Get a pair of those tear away pants or goddamn anything, for God's sake. Yeah, Wally, I know how you feel. My dad doesn't wear pants either. Dad! Invite all your friends and try to reach his house before dark. Take care, Wally, and remember to say no. Stay smart. Don't start. Don't start what? Fires? Okay, now that's a different bear. Kids, Wally Bear may have five lives, but you only have one. Okay, first of all, I'm just gonna say a whole campaign of this games, ads, celebrities pitching in. Did that have any effect? Because to me, I feel like if you're targeting kids and teenagers, telling them to not do something might be completely opposite of what you should do because it would have opposite effect, right? Because now it has you made it uh, somewhat cool for to do, you know do that like. Everybody's saying, like, don't do drugs. It's like it literally something that society is telling you not to do. So then kids doing that, to them will feel a cool thing to do. So that's literally opposite effect that you're going to have. So is there any stats on that? Uh, you know, that you know, after doing the campaign, did it actually help or did it hurt? So the game starts out in this suburban town. You play as this bear named Wally who rides a skateboard everywhere. Also, even though you play as an anthropomorphic bear, dogs are still dogs and birds are still birds. And I mean, I can't blame him for being mad. I'd be pissed too if no one transformed me into a radical sunglass wearing skateboarding version of myself. Oh God, seriously, that's it? One hit and you're dead? If you die, you have to go all the way back and each level is ridiculously repetitive and difficult. I think it's worth noting that GamePro gave this game a five out of five on the fun factor and the challenge. Sister Sinister, you're full of shit! Also, looks like they had a nightshade competition in this issue. Why'd no one tell me? I am gonna take that sitting down. The one saving grace is picking up what I assume to be a frisbee or a, perhaps it's a one-way boomerang pie. Yeah, I don't know, something like that. When you get it, you can actually shoot the enemies and finally kill them. Even though it's still really hard because these birds are endless and you're just on a skateboard the whole time. Imagine, and no, really, imagine this. If every level in a video game was the ice level. That's this game, and it's got platforming. Oh, my favorite. Now you can actually take one extra hit when you equip the Frisbee. You can even just breeze through some of these levels if you just keep shooting in a straight line. But if you take any damage, the Frisbee goes away and you can't throw it anymore, so you might as well reset, because this game is nearly impossible without it. Also, I think so I mean, seriously, even if Bard can kill you and Bard has an unpredictable flight, obviously, which just comes from anywhere to hit you. This is just ridiculous. Somehow you can stack up to two frisbees and four hits using the skateboard as well, but I, I don't fucking know. Ricky Rat was trying to get Toby Turtle to join his gang. Who's Ricky Rat? Who's Toby Turtle? Who the fuck are you? He said Toby would have to take some pills. Oh, well, maybe I should go talk to Ricky Rat then and get some acetaminophen for the headache you're giving me right now. Yeah, by the way, uh, skateboarding on the train is most definitely encouraged, kids. Eventually, yeah. you make your way out of the subway. Yeah, skateboarding in trains, right, is definitely encouraged. Hitting dogs and birds, right? Throw pies at them, that's also encouraged, apparently. Which was uh, in the suburbs, may I remind you. You find yourself in another neighborhood that looks exactly like the last one. Oh, okay, then you're supposed to go into another subway? How many subway connections I gotta make to get to my uncle's house? Maybe my parents could have given me a ride if they weren't so busy mauling each other's privates. 
Haynes, <laughs> Levi's, Dockers, take a trip to the Gap, Dad. It's not that hard. Oh, okay. So this subway is a castle. Th this this one's a, ca a castle. It's a castle. Yeah, it is a castle. Castle is it a fort? It has the Saxons, I guess, for defense or something. Getting there before dark might have been the least of Wally's worries. Yeah. Hey, Wally, you think you could have maybe, you know, taken a detour around this part of town? This guy's literally dropping bombs out of his window all day. That's that's his job. Because Man, fuck I guess the it. economy really has gotten bad. So after you get out of the real, actual demilitarized ghetto where no kid should ever be, you go into this MC Escher garage with a, a cat man. Okay, I I think uh I think I might be getting a bit of a contact high from this. Where's my hands? I just saw a Larry Lizard going into this garage. Okay, wonderful. Yet another person I have no context for. He was drinking out of a funny looking bottle and acting really strange. It sounds like Larry's been drinking. Wow. How do you get that good? Remember. What is this? 30s or something? Funny looking bottle. Is that he's talking to one of those detectives from one of those old movies? You see, and you know the the way they talk. I don't know what is that called. Uh, you know, but, but you know that weird type of always smoking cigarette, funny looking bottle. Really. Remember, even grown ups shouldn't drink and drive. Now this really needed to be said. I mean, all those drunk driving kids were tearing this country apart. Ah, huh. well, I'll assume this is Larry. Oops, I killed him. Moving on. <laughs> All right, I have to admit, this time I've been caught off guard. How exactly did that door lead to this? It's a basement. Hey, Wally, yes. don't forget to take the shortcut to Uncle Gary Grizzly's through the snake cave. It's right after the, uh, it's, it's coming to me. Uh, it's the bomb ghetto? Yeah, you'll find it. Don't worry about it. This Pipe part something is, is basement. impossible. There are just so many things, and there's huge platforming pitfalls everywhere. It would take anyone many, many tries to even get through this part. Seriously. And don't forget, everything is an ice level. How did this teach kids anything when they couldn't even get to the end of the game to learn the frickin' message? Seriously, this is ridiculous. All the shit that is falling, those birds, then there's the skateboards, so you have to keep that in the mind. That it's not just walking. Too many th elements are happening. How are you supposed to focus on all of that? What is he, in some kind of a navy seal or something? is this supposed to be this game has a chronic condition of never explaining anything two minutes ago we were in the suburbs now we're what taking a stroll through nikolai tesla's secret underground lair seriously apparently according to wally i gotta infiltrate a freaking fortress just to get to my uncle's house it's a time machine what the fuck i promise i'll never do drugs again dad by the way, this is literally the only room in the entire game that's like this. It's it's so out of place. Frickin' Play-Doh's up here hucking loogies down at me while I'm trying to balance the top pillars on a fucking skateboard! Ladies and gentlemen, this is art. There's a million doors here, and there's only one of them that leads to the way out! To get past this part, you just gotta keep relentlessly scaling the castle and trying doors until you find the right one. Come on, come on, come on, yes! Oh, finally! Watch out for a man giving away candy. Uh, are, are you aware that our city has an underground demon fortress in it? And apparently the subway just passes right through that shit. G give me the man. Give me the man right now. I'll, I'll take fucking candy right off his hands. It's amazing compared to what I've just been through. Oh. Underground demon cave? Did you do drugs, John? Because that doesn't seem so. I think nobody would believe him. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I just let's just resume then, huh? Back to business as usual, just trying to play it cool after the shit I've seen. Just gonna keep this secret nice and tucked away oh, in my God, soul until it burns a hole through it. This must be what Buzz Aldrin felt like when he got back from the moon. I can't I can't play stage wise games like this that has no plot, only linear playthrough, and you just have to go through challenges just to go to the next stage. I can't go through that. 
this is way too boring just me watching this even though john is doing jokes and things this is still kind of annoying because i don't like this shit wait this i gotta go in there what is this a crack den i thought i was supposed to be getting off drugs this house's windows are broken it doesn't even look like anyone's inhabited it for years also the neighboring house is just completely blown up just blown half up all right here goes nothing I guess that's the point. Then what it's not good. Is that, is that... Is that my uncle? Is this my uncle? Oh, nothing wrong here. Just my uncle happens to live in Mad Max and no one thought it was appropriate to tell me. So tell me, what's this, uh, what's this award here on your shelf for? For, uh, staying alive this long? Yeah, I was and gonna say And I'm not even that. gonna comment on your <laughs> pants situation because the squalor you live in is astounding. Does anyone know you live here? Do you get, do you get running water and electricity? Can you even afford pants? Well, what do you mean, new friend? I didn't bring a friend. Is that me he's talking about? Am I the new friend? I, I didn't ask for this. Well, that, that's it? That, that, that's all. Always remember, if someone tries to make you do something... The whole party, just this one slide where it looks like my face had an arrangement with the pavement? I think there's more to that. Oh, I'm restless. I that can't deal. That statement is hard. I gotta man. relax. Then get Gonjo with the wind. That wasn't even funny. Alright, screw it. Give me a talk. Didn't. Calling the kettle black. If you ever thought of saying I misrepresented it away from me, you're a coward and a liar. Oh, that, a that's so good. That guy went to the moon. <laughs> Thanks for watching something. JonTron, and if you want to support the show, I you think can... that was a half statement from that, and I think there was more to that, right? Remember, if some somebody tries to make you do something, what? So I guess that was a drug video about what though he just goes to his uncle Arno. Did I miss something in that? I, I just I was so preoccupied with how much I hated that type of game. I guess I might have missed something, but I don't know. Just you know, you brought a friend for what? I don't know. Alright, people. You know, okay, let's see if there's something. You can else. help us out by signing up for a free 30-day. Don't forget to subscribe and That's follow it. me. Audible. Yeah, people. Go to original video page link from there. Uh, you know, uh, click on the Audible link from the John Tron's uh, video page, I guess, and support that channel. This is good, right? But even though I hated the topic of this linear game shit, but as a whole thing, anti-drug games, obviously that was ineffective because nobody would play that shit because it sucks. So I highly doubt many people played it. I guess it was made for, you know, parents to give their kids something like this. But since the kids are the ones, small kids, who still ask their parents for games this kind of small kids if you're trying to teach them anything it's always hit and miss so you have to be really careful so it's up to parents to clear up the message because this could go either way if parents just gave them the games and just fucked off to a job or something because let's be honest also people have to do job uh, they don't they are not always around you know that's how the world works so if they just gave the games to kids and fucked off this could go either way. It could, you know, I guess, work as a, oh, drugs are bad. Or it could work like, ah, oh, fuck it, drugs. Look at that. You, game. you know, in celebrities, Mr. T is talking about, right? P.V. Herman said something about crack. I wasn't paying attention, but he was just talking something about crack. Now there's a game. I guess I should try it out. It could have that kind of effect. So I don't know. Right, well, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out the reaction, there's a link in the description. Uh, check out the cast of plays like John Tron reaction playlist with all of my John Tron reactions, then Internet Historian, uh, Warhammer 40k, uh, History, and yeah, I'll see you next time.